Good morning. Man, it's great to see y'all. Uh, after all that we've been through the last several days, how awesome as it is to get to come together and to worship God. First two services were more excited than you guys are. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My name's Steve Ginoble. Wayne uh, asked me if I'd share this morning, and I'm so excited to get the opportunity to come and to talk to you. Um, you know, in the ancient days, uh, there were no bottles or recyclable cans. They, they would take animal skins and they would sew them together and make them kind of like a canteen and they would put their liquids in those. And this is the parable that we're about to look at. Luke chapter five, turn in, turn on your Bibles. Luke chapter five, uh, and Jesus kind of starts. We're gonna start with this scripture and then we're gonna look at several others as we go through. So Luke chapter five, beginning with verse 36. He told them a parable also. No one tears a piece from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. If he does, it will tear the new garment and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst and the skin, skins and it will spill out and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put in fresh wineskins. Pray with me this morning. Thank you, Father, um, for the chance just to come and to worship you. And I pray, Father, that you would challenge us over the next few minutes. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, uh, new situations, new structures uh, require uh, that things change. You get a new job, you have to learn a new skill, right? Uh, you have new relationships. You have to learn how to relate to that person differently. Today, I want us to look at a new you for a new year. I want to ask you, what are your wineskins? What are your wineskins? You're always a thinking, acting, talking, responding. They work well in 2020, but they're not going to cut it in 2021 because we have to put new wine in a new wineskin. What will 2021 hold for us? Uh, you know, we're days away from 2020 being behind us. Yeah, I thought that. I knew I could get a, a reaction from that. Uh, what will 2021 hold for us? You know, you, you, you can go to the grocery store and you can buy the tabloids and they have all predictions of what the new year will hold. You look at websites and they have their theories on what's going to happen for next year. I, I'm no prophet, but I know there'll, there are three things that you can count on in 2021. You'll have some new problems, you'll have some new pressures, and you'll have some new possibilities. You can count on those three. So how, how do we survive? I think the key lies in character. And character always overcomes the circumstances that are around us. So the message today w would be make 2021 a year of character development. I'm gonna suggest three quality, character qualities that are essential to face a new year. I think the Bible says there are three important qualities that face the future. Really, I think it's creativity, conviction, and courage. New problems, will require creativity. New pressures will require conviction and just knowing what you stand for and the new possibilities will require courage. A willingness to take advantage of what those new possibilities are in your life. We'll look at several different verses, but uh, first, new problems will require re creativity. Now, I hate to tell you, but we're still gonna have problems in 2021. We're still gonna deal with some of 2020 problems in 2021, but there'll be some new ones as well. Sorry about that, I didn't mean to spoil your morning. The good news is that they're not the same old problems, but we'll get some brand new ones. And the whole new set, unique, different. It won't be boring, there'll all be new challenges. You know, how many of, how many of you guys 10 years ago thought that you would be living in a global pandemic. I didn't, and I don't think many other people did as well. Most of us have no idea about the problems 
that are coming. But new problems require new solutions. And I, I was thinking about this and I was driving home from the office, um, I, I believe it was Tuesday, and I pulled up to the red light right, right there. And I'm gonna turn left to go toward my house. And I was the first one at the red light. And there was multiple cars in all directions, except for my, my turn, across from me there was nobody. So the other three, there was lots of cars normal Simpsonville traffic. The light turns green. What do you do when the light turns green? Now, you look to make sure there's, uh, that everybody had stopped. And I will look, make sure everybody stopped, and then I eased into the thing. And there was my problem, I should have gunned it. Because a bicycle came up beside the cars and ran broadside into my car. And when I say significant damage, well, put it this way. I called my insurance agent and I said, you've never heard this one before. And he said, oh, I've heard it all. And so I started telling the story and he said, I've never heard that one before. <laughs> I went to Taylor Color and Collision, my buddy Paul Taylor, the next morning. I said, you, you, you've never heard of this one. Oh yeah, we've heard it all. I told the story and they said, we've never heard that one before. New problem, require new solutions. The old way of thinking, trying to solve these problems may not work. Proverbs 18, 15 says, an intelligent man is always open to new ideas. In fact, he looks for them. We have to be looking for new solutions, new ideas. You know, someone recently sent me 60 excuses for a closed mind. Everybody take a deep breath. I'm not gonna share all 60, but I thought a couple of them were pretty good. First one, we tried that before. Our place is different. It, it costs too much. We, we don't have enough time. That's not our problem. We're not ready for that. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. I know you're all looking at me on that one. Let's sleep on it. Here's my favorite, let's form a committee. And then the famous last words, we've never done it that way. Most people spend more time trying to get around a problem than actually solving a problem. Yeah, you, you say, I'm just not creative. Yes, you are. You're made by the creator. The biggest block is our attitude. Ephesians 4, verses 24, 22 through 24 say, your attitudes and your thoughts must be constantly changing for the better. You must be a new and different person, holy and good. He says your attitudes must be changing. I saw a, a news uh, on the news the other day, a person 105 years old, and they were interviewing him, and they asked him this simple question. They said, you must have seen a whole lot of change throughout your life. And he paused for just a minute and he said, Yes, and I hated every single one of them. You know anybody like that? Just do not like change and hates every single one of it? You know, it's like the two caterpillars that are crawling along on the ground, and one, they look up and they see this beautiful butterfly, and the one looks to the other one and says, you could never get me up in one of those. In 2021, we can't have a hardening of the attitudes. You gotta keep growing and going and developing. Attitudes are kinda like diapers. You know, every now and then you need to change them or it's gonna smell up the place. You need new attitudes, new solutions, new ways of looking at things for new problems. Have you noticed that a task becomes more difficult when you have a bad attitude? Well, I have a real life example. Several years ago, my wife and I, um, my parents gave us a card table and chairs and they came in this big box. And I thought, well, this is cool. You know, we'll, we'll get, open up the box and we'll pull out the table and set it up and pull out the chairs and put them around and we'll be good to go. And I opened up the box and there was a bunch of pieces in this box. To say I'm not a handyman, that'd be an understatement. 
And so I had a bad attitude. I, I've got to put this thing together. Why can't you just put it in the box all put together and then you just set it out? Took twice as long, maybe three times as long to put all that together and get to enjoy my gift. It's about attitude. It was the attitude that was killing. In 2020, you've not been able to control everything that's happened. It's been crazy. Spoiler alert, you're not gonna be able to control everything that happens in 2021 either. But you can control how you respond. New problems will require creativity. New pressures will require convictions. What is conviction? Conviction is a willingness to stand up for what you believe. You don't cave in in the future. You don't have to conform. All all, all the websites out there uh, with what's in and what's out or magazines, what's in and what you can wear and what you can't wear, this is how it's supposed to be. I'm... I'm not going to let someone else tell me what it's in and what's out. My wife says I should, but I don't. Romans 12, 2 says, don't let the world squeeze you into its mold, but let God remake you so your whole attitude of mind is changed. There will be a lot of temptations in 2021. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Have you decided what your values are? you're gonna base your life on in 2021. You really need to decide. You really need, we really need men and women of conviction in the new year. Men and women that are not wishy-washy. Men and women that will say, I don't care if everybody else is doing it. It It doesn't interest me. If it's not right, I'm not gonna get caught up in this materialistic world. I'm gonna do what's right in the eyes of God. I'm gonna let, not let the world squeeze me into its mold. How can you do that? I, I think two places. In God's presence and God's word. Isaiah 40, 31 says, those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. And Psalm 19, verse seven says, God's word gives new strength. Why does God allow stress in our lives? I believe Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. But this happened so that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God. That's conviction. Paul says God allows these things in our lives so we might rely on God. One of the greatest Christians who ever lived. And he came to the point where he didn't want to live anymore. He wanted to give up. You ever felt that way? He says, it taught me to look to God. New pressures require convictions. Where do you get it? Not out of some textbook, but really out of experience. Everyday life. What's the difference between an opinion and a conviction, an opinion you and I can argue about all day long, a conviction you're willing to die for. What are the convictions that will hold you up when the pressure's on in 2021? New problems require creativity, new pressures require convictions, and finally, new possibilities require courage. 2021 will be full of wonderful plans that God has for you. Exciting, a very exciting time. I think one of the most exciting times to be alive. Great possibilities. I think we're living in the most exciting time. God wants to do some great things in your life, your family, and in this church in the next 10 years. I believe that. But it won't happen automatically. You have to step out in faith. There's an element of risk. Hosea 10, verse 12 says, plow new ground for yourselves, plant righteousness, reap the blessings your devotion to me will produce. It is time for you to turn to me, your Lord, and I will come and pour out blessings on you. Did you you hear those words? Plow, plant, reap. He's saying, you want your your life to count for something? then you have to start cultivating. 
right now. My wife's uh, father, my father-in-law, he owned an apple farm for many years. And on that apple farm, they uh, had a U-pick a- apples, but they also had fruits and vegetables they would sell there in the store. Now, he always opened the store because when the a- apples were ready uh, on August 15th, Now, if he had waited until August 15th, opened the doors, then his apples and his fruits and vegetables would have been not there, non-existent. I mean, they would have been eaten up if he hadn't done all the work in advance because it would be about this time of year he would start plowing the ground, that he would start pruning the trees. Then as it got later in months, he would have to spray and you had to do so much work in advance to reap the harvest in the end. Let me ask you, what what are you planning to harvest in 2021? One one, one year from today, how are you gonna be different? If you make plan to make changes a year from now, you have to start cultivating right now. You need to cultivate some new habits, some new relationships, some new activities in your life. Because it just doesn't happen. If if you're gonna be different a year from now, you have to start working on it right now. What do I want to do different with my family and my finances and my personal walk with Christ? What do I want to do different in my relationship with my children, my parents? Have you started cultivating that right now? Whatever you sow, you will reap. If you don't sow anything, you're not gonna reap anything. What is it you need to start cultivating in your life? You need to think about that as we are going straight into a new year. What do you want to see in your life down the road? You need to start now. You know, our our phrase team is incredible, but if I decided I wanted to play with them and I just, well, there's no chance that's ever gonna happen. But if you, who have musical ability, you still have to learn and practice and Start cultivating the ability to be able to be a part of this team. You have to step out in faith. Plow some new ground. Don't be afraid to go out on the limb because that's where the fruit is out there. Plow that new ground that involves, that involves courage. That's why the possibility, new possibilities require courage. It's risky to try new things. It's much easier just to stay with the familiar A lot of people will not be any more mature in 10 years. They'll be living that same year over and over and over again. They'll just repeat it. I I read about a biologist and he had two caterpillars. I don't know why I have all these caterpillar stories this morning. He had this pot and it was a big circle pot and in the middle of the plant was the, the plants that those caterpillars eat. And so he placed those caterpillars on the rim of that pot and they just began to walk around that pot. And for one week, they just circled around the pot, one caterpillar following the other one and they went around and around the pot until they finally were exhausted and starved to death. And what they had was right there in the center, but yet they never tried to move in to begin to eat. A lot of people live their lives that way and just go around doing the same thing over and over and thinking maybe things might get better. They repeat the same things over and over and there is a new year and there's not a new you. Just the same old thing. They don't plow any new ground. What is it that you would try for God if you knew you couldn't fail. If I could guarantee you this morning you wouldn't fail, what would you try for God? Have you ever thought about that? Notice the result of plowing. God says you will reap blessings from me. My challenge to you this morning would be um, plow some new ground. Notice the results of that plan. God says, you will reap a blessing from me. 
I would say, I would dare say that something in, for you to do something new in your life in 2021, you got to get off the bench, get into the game, make your life count in this new year. Isn't it about time? Isn't it about time to start letting the Lord bless you? How do you do that? You plow some new ground. You step out in faith. You take a risk. You say, God, I'm going to go for it. This is my year for dedicating it all to you and character development. I want you to bless my life as I plow new ground. What's going to hold you back? Some of you say, well, Steve, you, you just don't know. God could never use me. There's a time in my life where I made some terrible mistakes. I made some bad decisions. I was a terrible person. And because of that past, I shouldn't expect God, anything from God. Really? Listen to this verse, Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19. Don't cling to the events of the past or dwell on what happened long ago. Watch for a new thing that I, God, am going to do. Don't dwell on the past. That hurt, that relationship, that difficulty, that failure, that tragedy. Don't cling to the past. He says, I'm going to do a new thing in your life. So go for it. New possibilities will require courage. Some of you say, Steve, I, I've had a blessed life. It's not fair for me to expect anything else from God or for him to continue to bless me in this new year. I've already had a full and wonderful life, and it's been great. I shouldn't expect anything else from God. Look what God says in his word. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. The good news, the best is yet to come. If you're a believer, your best days are yet to come. If you put your faith in Christ and have a relationship with God, you never need to fear the future. We don't know what it holds, but we know who holds it, right? We don't need to be afraid of the future because as a Christian, all my best days are in front of me. But he says, you've not seen anything yet. Let's just let's get right down to it this morning, okay? Are, are you spiritually and emotionally ready for a new year? There will be new problems if you're not ready. There will be new pressures that you'll cave into if you're not ready. There will be new possibilities that you'll miss and that he wants to bless you that you will miss if you're not ready. It all boils down to character, that creativity, conviction, and courage. They're the tools. So what is needed is a new you for a new year. And that's great. So how do I get that? How do I get creativity, conviction, and courage? Sunday school answer, you get it from God. He is a specialist in character change. Listen to this verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. When someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He's not the same anymore. A new life has begun. And that's what baptism illustrates for us. We take that person, put them under the water, bring them up, and it's a symbol of saying, I died to that old way and I'm living and I'm starting all over again as I come out of the water. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it to the fullest. You say, I've already made that commitment. I made that commitment five years ago, 10 years ago. So the biggest mistake Christians can make is to think that they can live off that commitment that they made in 1976. You know, I, I, I walked the aisle when I was a little boy. My parents encouraged me to accept Christ. Um, I'd been in church. But I walked down the aisle. I prayed and received Christ as my Lord and Savior. And my spiritual birthday is in summer of 1971 when I accepted Christ. That's when I made a decision. In the first 10 years of my spiritual life, I lived off of that commitment. And I wondered why there wasn't that much change in my life. 
on growing as a Christian should. And I found out that it's a daily renewal of that commitment. Each day, you go deeper and deeper. You make stronger commitments. When was the last time you renewed that commitment to Christ? We have to continue to update that commitment. This year's commitment will be a little different than last year's commitment because there'll be new problems, new pressures, and new possibilities. I can't think of a better time to update a commitment than at the start of a new year. Okay, Lord, I want to go deeper with you this year. I need a new commitment for a new year. How do you know when you need a new, to make a new commitment? One of the ways is the joy is kind of all drained out of your life. And soon those relationships with Christ is replaced with rules and regulations, do's and don'ts. You just need to fall in love with Jesus all over again. You just need to say, Father, I'm gonna put aside my old way of serving you with rules and regulations and I'm gonna serve you out of my relationship with you. Romans 7, 6 says, now you can really serve God, not in the old way, but in a new way. Some of us this morning are stuck in legalism, the do's and don'ts. God says, now I just want you to love me. Another way to know it's time for a new commitment, you've committed to Christ, but you're trying to live for him out of your old, in your old lifestyle. You're trying to be a Christian and hang on to the old ways, the ways you used to do things. You're trying to mix the new and the old and it won't work and Jesus says, you can't put new wine in old wine skins because they will burst. You will fall apart and, <coughs> and the joy will be drained out of your life. God wants to do such great things in 2021. He wants to do great things through this church Where we've been is nothing compared to what he wants to do, where he wants to lead us. I just don't know a better time than at the beginning of a new year to say, Jesus, I open my life up to you. I recommit my life to you. Make this, this year, a year of dedication to him. Let's pray. Why don't you just uh, talk to God right now? Tell him what's on your heart. You don't have to pray a big flowery prayer. Just talk to him and say, God, I, I wanna go deeper with you in 2021. This is gonna be a year for you. I, I want to get in gear. I wanna get on board. I, I wanna make my life count. Lord, I need your creativity to face problems that will be coming my way. I need new convictions to face pressures that will bend me a whole out of shape. And Lord, I need courage to take advantage of new possibilities that will be before me. This year will bring great opportunities for many of you, spiritually, career-wise, professionally, financially, in your families, in your education. You need courage that Christ can give you to step out and plow some new ground to go for it. What you need is a new you for a new year. Jesus says, much as I know how to, I, I ask you to come into my life and make me the person you want me to be. Some of you are already Christians and you need to say, Lord, I need to serve you in a new way, not mechanically, not obeying rules, but ha having a relationship with you. Thank you, Father, for your word. May the year 2021 be a year of destiny for each of us as individuals and for our church as a family. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.